Thank you very much, uh, Miles. Uh, so I would like first to thank the, the organizers, uh, Norbert, Frank, uh, for uh, putting this very interesting workshop and uh, having me here. Uh, so um, I will try to uh, tell you about a uh, recent update about uh, the, uh, the story about this kerospin liquid described with the PEPS uh, framework. Um, so I will first maybe make uh, some general introduction about uh, what do we mean by kerospin liquid and uh, uh, make some analogy with the physics of the fractional uh, quantum mole effect. So describe the key features which, uh, which would be uh, uh, expected. Um, then the, the next question is whether, you know, these type of state can be realized in uh, nature. And in particular, are there very simple physical model where uh, such a state could be OSIT. So I will give you some example to, uh, uh, so this is not, this will not be based on, on PEPS uh, analysis. It will just be based on, sim I mean, sim maybe simpler uh, uh, Langshaw's exaggeration method that uh, I think are reasonably convincing that uh, these, these, uh, these uh, carospin liquid are, are ground state of these simple models. And, um, and then I will go maybe to the more interesting question for this audience, which is, uh, uh, can we describe such uh, ground state with the uh, framework of PEPS? And in particular, there is a conceptual issue which has to go so, uh, with some uh, no-go theorem I will try to, uh, to explain. Uh, that if you take it literally, would just say that you cannot do that. Uh, and uh, my job here is to uh, try to convince you that this is not the case and uh, that there is no real obstruction to, uh, to describe Kerospin. <laughs> okay, sorry. So how should, call it, uh, should we call it? Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start with... Let, let's start with some uh, basic things. So the, the uh, you know, the, these topological Karo states, they, they are something that are very well known and, and uh, genuine in the field of the fraction quantum whole states. Uh, and um, so here uh, we are interested in what we can call uh, the, the spin analogs, the quantum spin analogs on the lattice. Uh, and uh, so, so it means that if such analogs exist, there would be a different kind. Uh, there would be uh, either abelian carospin liquid, which would uh, somehow be in correspondence with the well-known uh, Laughlin uh, fractional quantum mole state. Uh, and there would be even more exotic uh, carospin liquid, would be, uh, which would host uh, non-abelian particles, uh, would be the analog of the non-abelian uh, fractional quantum mole state, and then maybe we can even imagine that there are states which have no analogs in the for fractional quantum mole states. Uh, that's possible. Uh, so, in fact, uh, we already know since, uh, you know, in the uh, uh, late 80s that uh, uh, such a Karaspin liquid can be uh, constructed easily, and that was the work by Kalmeyer and Laughlin that uh, built such a state from uh, uh, from uh, uh, projecting on the lattice uh, a bosonic uh, new equal one half um, laughing state. And that was uh, really the paradigmatic example of uh, what we may call an abelian carospin liquid. Uh, so what, what do we expect? Very, I mean, in very, very simple uh, words, uh, the, uh, the, the, they, should, uh, they should exhibit uh, um, some some order, but not beyond. They, they go beyond the usual order parameter paradigm, uh, in the sense that they don't uh, show any spontaneous broken symmetry and no local order. And so that that feature, uh, that negative small negative feature, make them maybe difficult to detect. Uh, but but there is a notion of topological order that have been uh, introduced by uh, X G Wen. Uh, that they should uh, th they should exhibit, and uh, one simple definition would be that if I look at the uh, uh, many body spectrum of such a, a phase, then I, I expect to see degeneracy from topological order. 
And the, the, the degeneracy in the ground state manifold would depend on the topology of space. This is really the key feature. And then I should expect to see a, a gap uh, towards uh, uh, excitations, and these excitations would be fractionalized uh, anyways. So that's really the schematic feature of what we expect. Um, so, so now, uh, if uh, th there are one key feature in addition to that, uh, so that was for the topological order aspect, but now if I add to that the fact that uh, the state is Carroll, so that is the uh, time reversal and parity symmetries are broken, uh, but the combination TP is not, in fact. Uh, so this is where I find the analogy with the fractional quantumal state. And um, if I consider this state, for example, on uh, on a cylinder like, like that, which is our favorite geometry, then I would expect to see uh, edge modes. Uh, and this edge mode should be described by uh, a simple conformal field theory, which is this Vesumino Witten uh, SUN level K uh, field theory. Uh, and the fact that these edge modes are protected is related, in fact, to the concept of long range entanglement uh, in, in the system. So, so these are the uh, one of the key features we'll be looking at: uh, the presence of these uh, of these edge modes. Okay, so so now uh, do do we have simple models uh, that uh, host such uh, such uh, spin liquids? So uh, one of the uh, uh, very interesting paper uh, that uh, uh, established the uh, uh, a, a, a simple parent Hamiltonian is a paper by uh, Anne Nielsen and Herman Sierra. So Herman is was left, I think, uh, and Ignacio uh, was left also. Um, so when they uh, somehow they use the framework, uh, the uh, conformal theory uh, framework, where they write the the wave function in term of uh, CFT correlator. Uh, of uh, 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 SU2 level one uh, fields. And from this you know, uh, technology, they were able to, uh, to construct some parent Hamiltonian for, for this uh, Karaspin liquid. And the bad thing is that somehow this parent Hamiltonian is, is very complicated. It has some long range part that is pretty nasty and that is not uh, physical. But what they did uh, further on is that they, they used some truncation uh, and numerically, what they're able to prove is that the short range part of this Hamiltonian actually hosts uh, such a phase. So at the end of the day, uh, we are left with a simple model. Uh, on the, so this is, I forgot to say, this is on the square lattice. Uh, so this simple model has, has a well-known term that was, I think it was uh, discussed several times uh, uh, this week, so it has uh, just a nearest neighbor, so it's a spin one half on the on the square lattice. It has a nearest neighbor Heisenberg coupling J one, uh, J two next nearest uh, next nearest neighbor coupling, and in addition it has some Carroll term that breaks P and T symmetry, and which is just a permutation on the plaquette so P I J K L minus P I J K L minus one. It's a pure imaginary term. So this is where the uh, P and T breaking uh, come from. Uh, and so the, this is a schematic phase diagram that I would draw from their from their work. Uh, so there is would be the frustration J2 over J1. Uh, there would be this Carroll parameter lambda C in unit of J1. And uh, it is expected that there is a, a large region in parameter space uh, that holds this Kalmeyer Laughlin uh, Carroll spin liquid. So that would be a, a, a very nice model to study. Uh, which I will show. Uh, I will show later on some some results. Um, so now uh, th there have been some uh, extension of um, of this um, to the case where instead of having uh, SU two spins, uh, then the spins would carry uh, n colors and would be uh, SU n symmetric. And this type of model are very interesting because in cold atom, you know, in the cold atom physics community, this is typically the type of thing they can, they can realize up to n equal, n equal 10. So it's actually very easy uh, to, uh, to generalize uh, that. So now on every side, when, for example, uh, uh, consider the 
n dimensional fund fundamental representation. So I have I at my state I have n colors on every side instead of having spin up and spin down. Um, and then uh, I have the J1, J2 term are just translated into uh, two side permutation. Uh, and then uh, the um, J, uh, the, 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 the Carroll uh, perturbation now is uh, some permutation on the, uh, on the triangles. On every triangles I can, I can make on my, on my lattice. So every triangle, for example, each plaquette will have four triangles and I have this three-side permutation on every plaquette and I have a, a real part and, uh, and this imaginary part uh, that break uh, time and P uh, symmetry. Uh, so, so I will briefly mention some results, uh, and this is a collaboration with many, many people, including some people in the audience. I think Andreas and Jan here, um, and uh, and and we use here uh, different techniques. And I would like to show a uh, uh, very simple, uh, well, not simple, but. Uh, uh, conceptually simple result uh, um, based on Langshaw's exaggeration and also uh, diagonalization in the uh, singlet subspace, which is some uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, achieve, uh, uh, improvement that has been realized by uh, Pierre Nataf uh, um, in the recent uh, years, uh, which enabled to deal with uh, SUN model up to uh, n equals 10 using the fact that in the singlet subspace, the number of states is very, very much reduced when n is large. Uh, so this is, a I show the, the, the spectrum, and what you see is that uh, if you look down here, you see some uh, uh, degeneracy between different states which correspond to the ground state uh, manifold, and, and we clearly see the topological degeneracy. We see exactly n state in every in this uh, uh, sector. And then above that, there is a clear gap, uh, at least in most of the cases, we can really identify a clear gap, uh, which could be pretty large. Uh, and then some excitation, continuum of excitation above that. So this is exactly the picture we, we, uh, we expect. Uh, what we can do also is, uh, yes, Uh, this I didn't, uh, you mean SU, like SU3, SU5, SU, well, you see SU7 is not the case, and SU9, okay, it's, I'm not sure there is a real systematic, you see SU2, it's, it's well, uh, yeah, so I'm not sure there is any systematic. Uh, now the, the, the other test we've been looking at, uh, and is, uh, by looking at the, uh, um, open system. So in open system, you will expect to uh, see in the many body spectrum the uh, uh, some edge uh, some edge states, and uh, and these edge states uh, are supposed to uh, be well described by the uh, Wesumino Witten uh, SUN theory. So this is a case where n equal four, and you see here uh, uh, the um, um, the, the, uh, the, the prediction uh, of what the, the structure of these, uh, of these tower of state from the CFT that we, we are expecting. Um, so so these, these numbers here, so this correspond to the dimension of the EREP here, and this is the number of states for each dimension that we expect to see. And, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's the spectrum. Uh, of the, uh, the, the, the many body spectrum, the true many body spectrum as a function of angular momentum. And you can look uh, carefully, you see you have all the n dimensional here I listed here, and you can check carefully that everything inside here correspond to, to what's the prediction of the, of the CFT. Okay, so it seems to, uh, uh, to work very well. So, so we are rather confident that these type of model, they, they do host uh, our Carol spin liquid. So we expect uh, then that would be a good uh, a model to uh, somehow test the, uh, the PEPS formalism and maybe get uh, even more accurate result with, with PEPS. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. So 
right. Uh, so it's basically, well, well, you know, what we have to do is we take a system which has C4V symmetry. Okay, so you can classify the uh, eigen, uh, eigen states according to the EREP of C4V, and that, that gives you the, the angular momentum, basically. But the, 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 the thing is that it's not like a, 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 a true momentum. There are only four values here, okay? It's not like a... You would have a ring, yeah, yeah. There's only four values. That's why you you cannot go for a larger, yeah. S say it again. The uh, you 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 here uh, that should correspond to that. Is it correct? You check. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, ideally, they should be exactly on top of each other, but, but there is a splitting which is due to the finite size. It's just finite size effect. Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so now we move to the, to the, tensor, to the PEPs. Uh, so I think I don't need to, uh, uh, to explain what, uh, what it is about here. Uh, maybe I would like just to stress the specificity uh, of our calculation, what's special about the, the our PEPs to uh, to try to uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, to represent these Karaspin liquid states. So, so the formalism we are using here is the infinite PEPs formalism, um, and uh, uh, so the first thing I would li like to do is to uh, to use it to address the the SU two. Uh, um, Heisenberg model with this Carroll term I told you about um, uh, the uh, with this Carroll term and, and so this is a long history but uh, I will um, um, try to focus more on recent development uh, which have been done uh, mainly by uh, Uri Azik who uh, I think is in, in the audience uh, and uh, Lawrence uh, van der Stretten and um, yeah, and, and uh, Van Damme uh, as well. Okay, so so this uh, so so um, how do, how does it work? What is specific about our PEPs construction? Uh, the first thing we are going to use is uh, we are going to implement exactly the uh, SU two symmetry in the uh, in the PEPs, uh, which means that uh, our virtual space would be written as a direct sum of SU2 EREP, so that, that's uh, that the requirement. And, and there is a simple way actually to uh, generate a basis once you have, uh, you know, defined the virtual space, uh, there is a simple way to define the, a, a basis of tensors uh, which have this, uh, uh, which correspond to this virtual space. And our ansatz would be a linear superposition on every side, there would be the same tensor on every side to respect translation symmetry. And on every side, our uh, ansatz will be a linear superposition of these elementary tensors. So that's the first thing. And, and this procedure can be uh, adapted, of course, to SUN as well. Um, and then the other ingredient, which is very important, and which was first uh, introduced uh, quite some time ago uh, with Ignacio and, and Norbert, is uh, is to uh, also consider the point group symmetry. Um, and for, so if you make a classification of the PEPs according to the point group symmetry, uh, you can classify them according to the EREP of the point group symmetry. So here it's C4V, so there are, for example, the A1 EREP, which is a completely symmetric state, and there is the A2 EREP here, which get a minus sign when you make a reflection. So this is an EREP where the state, if you make a reflection, you get a minus sign. Now, if you make this linear combination, you know, of, uh, so this guy is a linear combination, this guy is a linear combination of the basis of tensor of each symmetry, and then you add them with an I here. And then the result is that now, with this ansatz, when uh, uh, you make a reflection, basically you pick up a minus sign here. So you get the complex conjugate. And then if you add, so, so you basically, uh, and now if you do a reflection, you get the same thing. Because if you do a reflection, uh, this guy would just 
you get from minus sign. So it would be the same as taking the complex conjugation, which is time reversal. So the combination of the two would be just uh, identity, but each of them uh, will, will, uh, will induce uh, a complex conjugation. So this is exactly what we want, and actually it works very well. So, so originally that was introduced in the simple case, which was the uh, Carroll RVB state, but we can generalize to any uh, virtual space. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, so these, yeah, so these guys are fixed. Okay, you a alpha and a beta with the two symmetry. So this is like a a, a, a basis of of tensors that we can deduce once for all. And then, uh, indeed, when we make this linear combination, these guys are real numbers that we can just use as variational parameter. So when you do optimization, you don't optimize with respect to the coefficient of the tensors, but you optimize with respect to, to these parameters, which are actually, there are not so many of them. This is the, the nice thing about putting the, all these symmetries that the resulting number of partial parameters is becoming quite small. Uh, okay, so now where, where, is the, uh, where is the conceptual problem? The conceptual problem comes from uh, uh, several work that state that uh, Carroll tensor network of, so it's a case of free fermion, have no gapped local parenchyma Newtonian. And uh, so, and, and we believe that this is also true, uh, although I think it has not been proven. No, maybe we are waiting for you to prove it. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what, so so then exactly. So then that would imp that would uh, uh, naively, if you take it literally, that would mean that you cannot represent the the this carrier spin liquid, which should be you know, which correspond to a, a gap state uh, in in term of of uh, tensor network. Um, okay, so if if the Hamiltonian because Hamiltonian is, is local here. Okay, so so that's that that the the problem. So how does it actually impact our ability to describe uh, these, uh, these phases with uh, Carroll spin liquid? So this is what we've been concerned for quite some time. And I think now we, we reach uh, somehow a, a picture uh, about uh, what's, uh, where, where the problem, actually it seems that there's no problem. I, I will try to convince you. Okay, so, uh, uh, so, so this is my unwaving argument. Maybe it's uh, if you are too picky, maybe uh, you won't like it. But uh, uh, so this is my uh, the, the unwaving argument is for if you, for example, let's assume I start with some cylinder, a very long, infinitely long cylinder, and I want to uh, compute uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, edge spectrum. So what I would do is according to an argument by Lee and Aldane, I will I will just look at the entanglement spectrum. That should be in one-to-one -one correspondence with the true uh, edge spectrum, and uh, and and the uh, the bulk edge correspondence of PEPs will tell me that my bulk correlation in the bulk somehow would be uh, with be uh, in in correspondence with the range of my boundary Hamiltonian. So my boundary Hamiltonian is edge B here, which is defined by writing the uh, reduced density matrix as exponential of minus HB. Um, then if the, there is a Carroll edge mode uh, with the discontinuous dispersion, that would uh, imply that uh, uh, my boundary H would be long range. This is how I can get such a you know, discontinuity in the spectrum. And from the bulk edge correspondence, uh, then that will tell me that the bulk correlation length, strictly speaking, is infinite. Okay, that's... You don't like it, okay? I knew. I, 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 I <laughs> long range. It's long range. Well, I, I, I. I I don't know how to to quantify this. You know the the fact that they they should trade well. In the example I know, when you vary, you have one parameter, and and you vary this parameter, they trace each other. Okay, if you one goes up, the other one goes up. Okay, that's the way. And if one di diverges, the other one di would diverge. 
Uh, I, okay, that's the, okay. <coughs> okay, so. Okay, so that's my crude, maybe too naive picture of, of, uh, of this uh, statement. Um, but uh, so, so what we expect uh, still is that there should be, a, a strictly speaking, some uh, relation lengths that will be diverging in the bulk. Uh, so, um, so is that really a, an obstruction to construct uh, a physically relevant uh, Carroll topological PEPs for uh, to describe uh, this phase with, with a finite uh, bulk correlation. And uh, so here we are going to use, okay, so maybe I skip that. What, how much time do I have left? Really not much, no? 15 minutes? Yeah, so maybe I will skip the CTMRG and, okay. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the only uh, modification is the fact that the corner is emission, so we use, uh, we use hexagonalization to uh, truncate the corner. Uh, maybe that's, that's uh, and, and we have good stability, so that, that's a difference with usual approach. Uh, so now uh, let, let's go back to my SU2 model. So uh, you remember the phase diagram? So, so for example, let's assume I'm sitting at this particular point here, um, which uh, was claimed in the paper by Ann Nielsen to have, uh, uh, I think, the largest overlap with the uh, Kalmea Lofin state. So this is how they determine this particular point in the phase space. Uh, so if we sit at this uh, and, and, we, uh, um, and we compute the energy of the, our uh, IPEPs, we see that it's actually very, very, uh, very, very good. Uh, it's uh, actually converging with the, uh, um, with the bond dimension very, very fast, uh, exponentially fast, almost exponentially fast. So this is a semi-log uh, plot. Uh, so the energy is, is very accurate. Uh, um, with Even with z equals six, we get around 10 to the minus five accuracy in the energy. Uh, so that's the first criterion uh, that uh, the faster conversion than uh, state-of-the-art MPS on cylinders. Um, that now the, the other uh, argument in favor of a good, yes. Uh, no, so I mean, if I compare, okay, where is it? Exactly, yeah, I compare the, the LY, well, because you are limited in LY anyway, I'm limited in D, so you can, no. The, the, the best energy realized in MPS is this one. Is you see, so it's somewhere, it's somewhere here. So, so I get two order of magnitude closer to the. In this sense, yeah. Okay, so let's say the best energy achievable with 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 uh, with current computers is two order of magnitude better, let's say, in accuracy than the MPS. Maybe I should rephrase this statement, sorry. Um, okay, now this is the entanglement spectrum that, that has been uh, uh, computed using the particle ANSAT uh, method. Uh, so this is basically for infinite edge. Uh, so this is the, the technology that uh, Lawrence have been developing and, and others, uh, I believe, uh, in recent years, and uh, which seems to work very, very well. So what it shows here is the uh, uh, the the edge uh, spectrum uh, the edge spectrum as a function of uh, momentum and showing this uh, beautiful uh, Carroll uh, Carroll spectrum and what is uh, uh, what is uh, uh, to be uh, what is important to look at is uh, the, the this sort of branch that actually it's not a discontinuity it's uh, really a uh, a very steep uh, branch, so there are actually two branches. And, and this branch, the slope of this branch, actually we show here, uh, depends on the uh, environment dimension. And so there we, we uh, as a function, when you increase the environment dimension, it becomes steeper and steeper. And so, e exactly, so the argument, uh, if you buy it, 
is that if you let chi go to infinity, which correspond to the perfect contraction, ideal, uh, then it will become infinitely steep. And then you, you get a perfectly Carl spectrum for, for this wave function. So this is the, uh, the quasi energy and this is the momentum. Uh, and, and this is a zoom, and this part is a zoom of, of this region here. Yeah, sorry, it wasn't clear. So it, when you zoom, you see that this guy is not infinitely uh, steep, it's not this discontinuity, but it has a finite slope. And, and, the, and we argue that this finite slope is basically a finite chi, uh, finite chi effect. Um, yeah, there is a two side unit cell because you do, uh, yeah, you, you do, uh, okay, it's uh, technicalities, but it's, uh, in principle, everything is translation invariant, but you do, uh, you do a spin rotation on the B side. It's a bipartite lattice, so you do, a, we have the same tensor on every side. You do a, a spin rotation on the B, on the B side. You mean the, oh, sorry, uh, this? Ah, here, you mean, yeah. Well, yeah, but there is not a true discontinuity, you know, the, the, the way these two uh, branches, they, they touch, there they might be some curvature. It's not a real discontinuity of the, of the slope. So when you zoom, no, no, but I think when you uh, when when you increase chi, then then uh, it will become steeper and steeper, and you won't see the you, uh, if yeah. I mean, th this guy, th this curvature, you don't see here uh, when you uh, unzoom. I mean, it's really, really you can really follow. You can really measure the velocity here. It's just because yeah, 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 and momentum. There is a cutoff. I'm not worried about this this thing. Uh, I, I don't expect to have a, a discontinuity discontinuity anyway as a function of momentum. So you have to to join the two branches somehow. Yeah. No, so so my, my, so the good, no ghost theorem will come here because then then I have a confirmation. I have some insight that I have a perfectly Carroll mode. So now, if I would apply the no ghost theorem, okay, this is my version, which uh, <laughs> no, that doesn't like. Then I would expect then that there is a, a infinite correlation in the box, and so uh, and and actually it's true. And what I'm going to show is that it is concept. It is uh, strictly speaking, it's true. Uh, but that correspond to a tail in the correlation function. So this is really what I, I want to show. A and so this is really a, an artifact that uh, doesn't hide the, the property of the state. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. At some point, it, it rises. Yeah, but but there is there there is something happening. I mean, the, at this scale, you don't see, but here there is something happening like like that. You know, I, I agree that the small k limit is is a bit tricky. This is not my calculation. We we'll have to ask uh, Lawrence uh, uh, how it goes. But, uh, Oh, you mean so to do to try to do which which is a chi dependence to do some kind of uh, yeah yeah I, I think we have some uh, uh, you you can okay I don't remember exactly but but if you uh, plot the the slope the inverse slope as a function of one over chi I think it 
like it's going to zero. Uh, not very accurately, but it's consistent with the inverse slope going to zero when one over chi goes to zero. I think we, we try something like that. Not super accurate, but uh, I believe it's true. Okay, so now let's look at the, uh, this issue of the bulk correlation, okay? So we can compute the spin spin correlation uh, in the way that was explained in previous talk, maybe by Philippe, I think, and how to use the uh, transfer matrix to uh, compute the long range correlation. And uh, what you see is that the spin spin correlation as a function of distance. So if you look at uh, small and intermediate distance, maybe up to distance uh, 10, and this is a semi-log plot, you see a straight line, which means that there is a exponential decay, fast exponential decay. And if you measure the correlation from the slope, you find something which is uh, roughly half a lattice spacing. So it's really short correlation lengths. And that consistent with a large gap. Um, so, so, so here we are very happy. Uh, it's consistent with the bulk gap. Uh, now the thing is, what, what happens with, uh, if you have a different measure of the correlation, uh, and you look at the uh, spectrum of the transfer matrix. And what you see is that, so this is the, the nice way of plotting the, the scaling. So this is the uh, one over the uh, correlation length as a log of the uh, leading, uh, leading gap as a function of the log of some subleading gap. Uh, and you see a very nice scaling uh, suggesting that uh, the one over chi go basically to zero. Uh, and uh, so that seems in contradiction with uh, what I said before. But actually what you measure here is not the short distance correlation. What you measure is really the long distance correlation. Uh, and now if you go back to the spin-spin correlation, you get some consistency because if you go back to the spin-spin correlation and now you look at, uh, at the uh, long distance part, then what you realize that this curve here just flattened very much and the larger chi, the more it becomes flat. As a, so you would say that I indeed you, that correspond to a, a, a diverging correlation length. But now, uh, if you look at the weight, you know, by, by looking at the intersect on, this, uh, on the y-axis, uh, the weight here of this tail uh, is extremely small. Okay, so, so basically the picture is that uh, there is a bulk correlation length here, which is a physical one, and there is an artifact from the PEPS construction that is this tail here. And this tail should actually go uh, uh, slower than uh, an exponential because uh, it's a sum of exponential where, where uh, the largest uh, psi is, you know, the, it's a distribution of exponential going to infinity, uh, but it may go slower, uh, it may go faster than a power law. So we don't know actually the functional form, but uh, we know it's slower than exponential for sure. Yes. Say it again, why? So, so the slope at long distance correspond exactly to, uh, to what I find here in the transfer matrix. So, so that's, that's when uh, the slope here would be one of these points here for a given chi. And so when I increase chi, I would just go this way or on this plot when I increase chi, it would become uh, uh, flatter and flatter. So, so that these results are, are identical somehow. If I measure the, the slope here, uh, or if I look at the correlation lengths from the transfer matrix, I get identical things. Exactly, yes. Oh, because Exactly, uh, th this is what we expect. So we are happy, but this we don't expect. And we think this is an artifact of the PEPS description. And, and uh, the claim, uh, we have an extra claim is that this, this weight here uh, would, decay, uh, would decay with uh, bond dimension. Okay, so the larger the bond dimension, the smaller the tail. Uh, and, and uh, Uh, 
uh, but we don't know the function form of the test, so we cannot. Uh, I don't know whether it's a, it's a power law. It may not be a power law. It could be anything that uh, goes slower than an exponential. It could be a stretch exponential. It could be it could be anything. But I tried, but you know, it depends. Okay, so it depends how this coefficient decay with psi. Uh, so if you make so. And, and uh, if these guys, they, they decay exponentially fast, I think you get a stretch exponential. Uh, if they decay as a power law, uh, you get a power law. Because somehow the, what is it, the Laplace transform? Or it's one, is it Laplace transform? The, the is, uh, so, so it depends, and, and, and I try to fit those coefficients, but uh, uh, you can equally well fit them with exponential, with a power law with a large exponent, so it's, it's not a, we don't have any definite, uh, the only thing we know is it goes slower than, than uh, exponential. And it's probably, I doubt it would be a power law, but who knows. Okay, uh, so let me, do we have five minutes to discuss or, or it's, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, thanks. So, so I would like to, uh, to discuss a little bit, so, so that's in a particular model. This is the SU2 square lattice, J1, J2, lambda model. But, but uh, we believe that these features are, are very universal. And indeed, we have found this in, in, uh, in many other cases. For example, uh, one case is a higher spin uh, SU2 model. For example, the spin one uh, model where uh, uh, we found similar features. So, so the, this model hosts uh, SU2 level two non-abelian chiral spin liquid, so which has uh, uh, um, uh, Ising uh, anions. And uh, here I showed just an example of the correlation length as a function of chi. And again, we don't see any uh, saturation of the correlation length. Of course, it's not a real proof because it cannot go very far, but at least we have no sign of saturation. So that's one example. We also look at uh, SUN uh, chiral spin liquid that I, I described before. And uh, so that's a calculation for the SU4 symmetric uh, uh, model and uh, using a D equal 15 uh, peps. And again, the correlation length seems to grow without saturating. Um, so, uh, so maybe you should look at this, this curve here. Uh, so this is uh, so these both are for the square lattice, but it's not restricted to the square lattice. So more recently, we investigated uh, the the case of the uh, Kagome lattice, so Kagome spin one half uh, uh, lattice. So this is a, a work by uh, Fan Yu and uh, Yurai Azik and uh, Jiao Chen, and there is a, actually a poster here by by Sen. Uh, and where we find uh, similar features. So in particular here, I show uh, one plot from the, from the paper so that the entanglement spectrum has a function of momentum again. And uh, here you see this, uh, so this is for an infinite cylinder with uh, uh, eight, uh, eight uh, unit cell uh, circumference. And you see again this uh, beautiful uh, edge mode uh, with the, uh, exact uh, SU2 level one content up to uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the tower of state up to the eight uh, levels. Uh, and again, we find you know, divergence of the correlation lengths and this uh, Gossamer tail. So it seems to be a, really a universal feature uh, of this PEPS construction. Okay, so, um, so, so to summarize, I would say that this Carol Peps possess all the features of the topological Carol spin liquid. Uh, that the long range correlation tail that we find is an artifact of the construction, of the uh, Carol Peps construction, but uh, somehow it's, uh, it's expected there will be such artifacts from, from the, uh, from the no-go theorem. Uh, but, uh, I hope I convince you that this is not a practical limitation to study the such model with, with PEPS. Um, okay, and, uh, and, th and then we can use this uh, also class, uh, the, the symmetric PEPS uh, ANSAS to uh, provide some uh, classification of these uh, 
also political crisis. And uh, usually I forget to acknowledge my collaborators, but this time I, I won't. So, <laughs> so I would like first to acknowledge, uh, you know, collaboration with Ignacio, Norbert, and Roman the, uh, uh, at, uh, a few years ago when I started to work with, with PEPS. I mean, I, I learned a lot from them, and uh, I went into this field uh, thanks to, to them. Uh, I would like also to acknowledge uh, Lawrence, uh, with whom I've been working, collaborating on this Carol Peps quite uh, a few times. And these are my uh, uh, co-workers in, in Toulouse, uh, uh, Mathieu Mambrini and Sylvain Caponi. Uh, Jiao Chen was a former postdoc, is now a professor in China. Uh, Yurai, also Azik, uh, was a postdoc, now he's working with Philippe in uh, uh, Amsterdam and Senyu, uh, who is a postdoc in uh, in Toulouse at the moment, and many others uh, that I don't have faces. So thank you very much.